Hello everybody, welcome to today's lecture. Today we will discuss human error identification. We will start with what is human error identification and then we will give you the steps. First one you require to do task analysis, then there are several ways to identify human errors. Uh, one of the methods is action error mode analysis, then we will discuss human hazard, then systematic human error reduction and prediction approach and one case study will be showing you what we have developed and then uh, I will show you some of the uh, human errors which were um, studied and uh, developed by Q1. Uh, given in his book, uh, A Practical Guide to Human Reliability Analysis in Appendix 2. So, if you recall my last class where we have defined human error and we have given classification of human errors and also we have identified the causes and brain bottlenecks. So, we discussed about uh, uh, human error in terms of slips, laps, mistakes, in terms of knowledge base, rule base and skill based work and human error. And uh, uh, today we will see more of um, more of practical issues means when you are working uh, in a plant and or you are a, as an engineer you want to judge the uh, or you want to identify the human errors. So, those kind of discussions will be made today. Okay. So, human error is well discussed topic actually it is a part of human reliability analysis. So, you will find out that uh, there are many techniques developed in the area of human reliability and in fact, HSE in 2009 they reviewed 72 potential human reliability analysis tools and then finally, they made a list of 17 tools which are uh, applicable to major hazard um, condition. Uh, in fact, uh, they have given a good review of it. The the procedure, the tool, the advantage, disadvantage and the situation under which it will be used. So, now when we talk about human error identification, it is it's definitely a systematic procedure and you know the human error is a difficult thing to understand and identify. So, a systematic procedure is required. The procedure comprises primarily these things more or less and you will find out some additional steps, uh, it, it all are the varieties only, but otherwise you, you must do task analysis, then human error analysis, then human error quantification and then human error reduction. So, let us see. So, first we will discuss task analysis. This uh, discussion is made or this PPT is made based on the book A Practical Guide to Human Reliability Analysis written by Kirwan and uh, uh, this example also taken from his book. Uh, let us see what is task analysis. It's task analysis means you in order to when you are doing work you know, any either it is a physical work cognitive work whatever may be the type of work or a mixture of physical and cognitive work so ultimately you have certain objectives or goal in mind and you do that work to achieve that objectives or goal and in order to achieve the objectives or goal uh, the work is uh, done in several sequential and or parallel st steps. So, task analysis basically it is basically a systematic method what happened it basically describe how work is organized 
in order to meet the goal of the specified task. So, what it does basically it describe task from its top level goals down to various sub task, sub sub task to individual operations. Okay. So, for example, you just think of that fill tanker with Cl2 chlorine that is that is basically the work or the task that has to be done. Then task analysis what it will do it will it will this is my goal that we want to fill the tanker with Cl2. So, in order to achieve this what are the things to be done and that means you have to first plan what is to be done and then the sequence also of execution also you have to identify and action to be taken or do the task. So, that is what is task analysis. So, fill tanker with C L 2. Now, in order to fill tanker with C L 2 what are the things you have to do? So, first you are planning that do in order in order you have to do first park tanker and check documents then prepare tanker for filling then connect C L 2 line and fill up then uncouple tanker document and depart this is in in order you have to do. So, <coughs> that means in order to fill tanker with C L 2 this is the this is the goal this is the task you have to do. Now, then when you 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 just see that so let the second one prepare tanker for filling then again you plan that how do you do it. So, here 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 it is clearly given check test valve for C L 2, check uh, W T for tanker, set fill alarm, prepare fill line, connect main C L 2 lines. What is the plan? That 2.1 or 2.2 in either order or 2.3 to 2.5 in order means this, this followed by this or this followed by this that you can do but these three in order you have to do. Okay. So, in the again if you if you if you see that how this can be done then again there are sub sub tasks. So, in this manner you will basically decompose or describe redescribe the task to sub task sub task sub task to the operation level exact operation level. Okay. So, if you see this you are finding out many things. So, one is a plan and then these are the actions and then again uh, some plan action some plan actions like this, but ultimately when you are basically coming down to that level when there is no further decomposition is required. So, this one if you clearly observe there are three important aspects first one is that goal to the individual operation level three other important aspects is one is plan define the way subordinate tasks are carried out. So, if I say fill tanker with C L 2 is the primary main task then plan that how the sub task will be subordinate task will be carried out to come to, to do this main task. Then there is stopping rule stop redescribing when it add no further useful information. So, you should not like park tanker and check documents is it required further decomposition it does not require. So, you do not do this where you find that yes it is re it require further and redescribing because it adds value in the operation then you go on doing it and third one is numbering. So, then what is task analysis? This is our hierarchical task analysis because we started with the ultimate goal and then finally, we, we break down to the individual operation level and in between what happened when you are interested to do this uh, when you are starting with this 
overall goal then you are planning that how that overall task will be completed and then again the sub task if, if it requires to further describing then you have done this in this manner you are you are coming to the bottom level when no further description is needed because you are at the actual execution and operation level. So, an HTA, HTA usually descends to 4 to 5 levels, when we in 4 5 levels it will be covered. This is hierarchical task analysis, there are other task analysis also like tabular task analysis. So, usually we use hierarchical task analysis and this is what is the approach it ultimately gives you all the elemental task to be completed for the overall goal to achieve and then at each of the elemental level you will you try to find out what are the error that can happen ok. So, that is why this task analysis is important. Now, now let us see some of the techniques. So, you have seen earlier failure mode and effect analysis. The equivalence of failure mode and effect analysis in task in human error analysis is action error mode analysis. So, what happened the analyst start with listing of individual actions. So, you have already seen when you have done the task analysis. So, task analysis gives you the bottom level actions and then then what happened you just you just do those things that identify how each action can conceivably fail means what way when you are doing that action suppose you are basically parking or looking at the documents preparing the documents. So, what what are the errors that you can make. So, then deter if you if you make error there what are the what are the causes that lead that led to that error. Then identify the effect then describe how the human error modes can be detected and then determine how critical this mode then identify risk reducing actions or features. In FMEA what you have done you find out the failure modes find out the effects, find out the uh, detectability, then also the causes of that um, error uh, failures and consequences of this failure and how to reduce the uh, risk of that failure modes. Exactly in the same manner what happened? So, action description close manual valve suppose P B 1 you do close, action error mode clo close wrong valve then action error cause may be procedure error, may be communication error, may be valve marking inadequate, may be lapse and then action error consequences may lead to explosion, risk is very high, then there will be some risk reduction measure and some comments will be given. So, that means, it is similar to failure mode and effect analysis, but please keep in mind that task analysis is the starting point here. Once you have broken the overall task to the elemental actions, then against each actions at the operational level, uh, actual execution level. So, there can be different kinds of errors. So, what uh, what way we are uh, identifying error here? What way the human can fail to do this elemental task? Okay. And then rest is like failure mode and effect analysis and also you, you can add the criticality analysis. Now, human HAZOP, you know what is HAZOP, hazard and operability studies, what we have seen in HAZOP, we have we have identified the process parameters, then for every process parameters we have chosen effective uh, guide words and then using the guide word to process parameter you found out the deviations and then those deviations are the important thing because they talks about the deviation from the normal operate operating conditions and then you want to find out the causes of that deviation, consequences of that deviation and finally, your this one 
recommendation for improvement. Now, in human hedgehog, the same way you have to you know the elemental task or the or elemental task by means the task which is not required to further redescribe. So, at the bottom level task and then at every bottom level task you find out that what way what are the guide words that is applicable for that task and then find out the deviation that can take place and find out the causes of the deviation consequences of those deviation and how the deviations can be removed. So, this is what is the worksheet this is what what is the worksheet given here that action description guide word action then action what kind of error and then what are the causes and consequences like this in FMEA what you have done there you found out what way what modes and here you are finding out the deviation more or less they are similar but it the here we are basically using guide words so maybe more scientific way you can develop this okay so i don't i don't want to discuss the objectives and steps further because these are similar to hazop study what you have done earlier now i will show you some of the guide words for human hazop because the guide word will be different than the process hazop you see that guide words here. Process edge of guide words when we have discussed we have more or less discussed these are the things. Now, human edge guide words no means not done when a similar analogy less less than more more than as well as as well as other than other than repeated sooner than something like this reverse later than mis misorders part of as it is part of. Okay. So, because it is the human work, so your guide words should match with the human work, the task human is performing elemental task. So, that particular task I want to close the valve, it is not done. Okay. So, in case of HAJO, basically when you are talking about valve, we, there we got, got, got the process parameters, maybe that flow, so no flow. So, here it is not done. So, then these are the basic guide words, some more basic guide words given here no action, more action, less action, wrong action, part of action, extra action, other action, more of time, less time. So, different guide words are given. So, my request to all of you just do one human hedge of test study using this guide word. What you have to do? You do the HTA task analysis, find out the elemental task at every elemental task you see that what are the what are the guide words applicable find out the deviations and then follow the normal hazard table ok. Now, we will <coughs> we will discuss something which is little higher than or more popular in uh, human uh, reliability analysis the systematic human error reduction and prediction approach that is known as SERPA. This was developed by Embre in 1986, Embre 1986. So, we will see one case study using this also. So, we will spend some time here. What are the objectives? Objective identify all human errors action errors related to the study object their causes and consequences. So, that means, we will show SERPA has given in SERPA we see that some of the error types actually what happened during execution of the task. Assess the probability and severity of the error identify possible recovery actions that may present that may prevent the error from leading to significant consequences. Decide whether actions are required to control the hazards and if so to identify ways in which the problem can be solved. Make operators aware of the hazard related to various actions. So, these are the objectives. Now, you will find out the what are the typical worksheet will be like this 
first is accent description, then what is the error, then what are the causes, what are the consequences, whether recovery is possible or not, probability, severity, actions and then comments. Okay. So, we let us see that uh, what are the different error types uh, used in SERPA and we will we'll also uh, show you one case study that we have done using SERPA technique. But we will not describe the everything about the case, whatever needed to for today's uh, topic human error identification that part we will describe now. Sherpa taxonomy, error taxonomy has action error, checking error, information retrieval error, communication error, selection error. So, five types. Again, under action errors, so this many, 10 different errors are given. Under checking error, 6. Under retrieval error, 3. Communication error, 3 and selection error 2. So, it is more or less uh, sufficient. So, when you see any task people are doing elemental task, you will find out that the error will fit to either one or more of the different types. So, under action error operation too long to short, operation mistimed, operation in wrong direction operation too little much too much misalignment error right operation in wrong objects wrong operation on right object operation omitted operation incomplete wrong operation on wrong object checking error check omitted check incomplete right check on wrong object wrong check on right object check mistime wrong check on wrong object information retrieval, information not obtained, wrong information obtained, information retrieval incomplete, information not communicated, wrong information communicated, information communication incomplete, these are under communication error. Selection error, selection is not done, wrong selection done. So, that is selection omitted and wrong selection omitted. So, that means 10 plus 6, 26 plus 3, 29, 32, 34. 34 different error modes. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you try to do human error analysis for your um, workplace, people work for the job, then I think these 34 error modes that really helps you. And now we will show you how this can be used in a real case. So, we have done a operation uh, study on overhead and gantry cranes. So, let me read, uh, read out this overhead and gantry cranes are machineries used worldwide for lifting and transfer of heavy loads in industries and ports. So, for this study operation of two gantry cranes and two EOT cranes are considered and the overall process how the crane operates, what are the different stages of operation and what are the ultimate elemental task we will discuss in the next slide. But you all know that crane basically take the load transfer load from one place to another and, and, and unload in, in some other uh, place at the unloading point. And again during loading there will be lot of elemental task, transfer time elemental task and also uh, when the unloading time anyway the task will be there and these are basically done by uh, that operator will be there and helper will be there and the facility under which the crane is operated that is also important because its facility design will um, uh, may lead to uh, safety and uh, related problems and as well as because of this there can be human error or other way human error also can lead to safety problem. So, um, here load transfer using overhead and gantry cane that is what we are showing here. Okay. So, first is pre startup inspection, 
start the crane, load hardware, move the hardware to desired position, unload hardware. So, that means, what is the overall goal? Overall goal, load will be transferred from one place to another. So, then immediately what you are doing? You are basically planning. So, plan, then what do you do? First is inspection, start, then load the hardware, move hardware from one place to the desired place and then unload hardware. So, in sequence you have to do. So, do in order. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, again what are the pre start of inspection? By saying pre start, is it clear? It is not clear because you have to what to is to be inspected that is important. Then it is further broken down inspect lower part, inspect top part, inspect lifting accessories and load capacity. Now, if you say no inspect lower part, there are many parts. So, then you, you have to further break into 1.1.1, like this. So, that means ultimately decomposing the overall the task to sub task, sub sub task to elemental task. Okay. So, we have done this. So, that means here 1, 2, 3, here, then here. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, like this 14 individual task prepare. Now, <coughs> again as I told you that that inspect the let me go back inspect the lower part. This one further broken down you see how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, if I if I say this is the main task, overall task, these are the sub task, this is sub sub task, then this is elemental task. If we do not further break down these two uh, lower level. So, at the lower level I am telling the elemental task. Okay. So, in this manner what happened? The entire elemental tasks, total elemental tasks were computed. So, error number, then task type, error mode. Now, then what we have done basically for every elemental task like 1.1.1, 1.1.1 check tracks for obstacle and or damage. Then check tracks for obstacle and damage omitted incomplete. This check is omitted or check is incomplete. So, it is basically checking error either omitted or incomplete. So, from the SERPA the taxonomy you know the task sorry you know the error mode from the SERPA taxonomy and from task analysis you know the task you compare the two. How many that error modes out of the 34 error modes, how many are applicable for this particular elemental task and then accordingly you write. So, either it will be checking error or it will be retrieval error or it will be inspection error or it will be action error or it will be selection error. Then error consequence recovery whether no recovery possible or not possible we have written no recovery. So, that is what we have understood and then we ask the people who are working there and the supervisors, engineers and based on group discussions we have identified all those consequences. First we have done the task analysis and with the help of them we verified that. Then we, we also shown them, train them with the error modes SERPA error modes, then a group meeting and finally, things were developed. So, it, it is required for, for human error identification. You see that all those all, all those errors are, it is basically we have given 1.3.3. So, just a minute.
So, 1.3 per the pre start of inspection, this one we have shown. But if you if you see that ultimately the, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sub tasks. So, under 1 again 1.1 inspect and power, 1.2 inspect top part, in then 1.3 inspect lifting accessories. This we have that 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, this we have further described and finally, gone to elemental task to represent in this lecture or to present in this lecture. And um, other things also we have done and it is available in this literature Mondol et al. The detailed analysis up to quantification it is available in this literature. Okay. Now, <coughs> I, will, I will show you that uh, you can go through this book Kir 1, a practical guide to human error analysis in appendix 2 they have given different errors. In appendix 2, two 1 they have given the generic, generic errors, some generic errors like general rate for errors involving very high stress level like um, your error in simple routine operation and their probability level also they have given. So, they have not only described the errors, they have given what is the probability of obtaining uh, having that errors. So, uh, you please you may go through, I am not reading out these things, but I have listed here just to tell you that, that there are resources available. It is a fantastic book, wonderful book for human reliability analysis. Then they have given some operational error in plant in appendix 2 like your control error, like your precision error, like that uh, welder worked in on the wrong line. So, the several uh, 16 different error, errors are given. So, then some ergonomic experiments was conducted by them and then also there also they have put some of the errors from ergonomy, uh, ergonomic experiments, uh, typing performance, human recall performance something like this. And then they have also developed some simulator and from there also for particularly the for nuclear control room operations point of view they identified simulation. Uh, they developed simulator and from there they have identified different kinds of errors. Okay. So, seven different types of errors are given and in fact, in this book I have just the appendix 2 I have shown here not the full appendix 2 and just uh, that the only the uh, error types or error modes uh, in fact, error modes not error types error modes and he has given Kirwan has given example against each of the error modes they are in this appendix 2 and the probability of happening such errors also given. So, it is a much more and the entire book is uh, very lucidly uh, explained and you all who are interested in human reliability analysis uh, may go through this book that will help you. Okay. So, finally, I will show you the references what we have basically gone through. In my last two lecture, I told you that that this reason human error was a uh, main book and today I think that for Serpa this Embry, this is a very good uh, material. Then Kirwan 1994, it is for overall human reliability analysis and understanding many of the techniques, it is very good book. Komamoto and Henle also given one good chapter on human reliability analysis and the case study I have shown a part of the this paper, part of this paper, which is basically our paper. So, I hope that you got some information today, which will help you in practically doing human error analysis, particularly in identifying the human errors. So, the analysis part will come soon and we will show you some of the tech more techniques and then quantification of human error. 
थैंक यू वेरी मच